Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the final tutorial um, in this series that we've been doing with Derwent. Um, today, or this evening, we're going to be looking at drawing on white and black fur, and I'm going to be doing a lion here, which I've started. Um, before we start, I'll just say you're all muted, all your cameras are off because this is being recorded, um, and also we don't want any interruptions. But if you do have any questions, please type them in the chat to Derwent and Charlotte will read your questions out loud to me so I can answer them. So um, I think that's everything we need to say at the start. Um, I think we need to find the messages. Sorry, we're sorting out. We've had a um, bit of issues this, uh, this evening, but we're sorting out now. So but I've changed where I am in the studio. You might be able to see um, because I've got a huge piece on uh, my board over there and I need my lamp here when I get to doing the black paper. Um, so very quickly before we start, I just want to show you some things. So somebody last week asked me um, how I you know, keep my pencils sort of organised and things. And I mentioned about the Derwent pencil roll and carry case, the carry all case. So I just thought I'd show you them now. So I've got my Derwent pencil roll here. And um, this is great for just taking out a few pencils if you're going out and about and you can just pop them all in there. There's even space for rubber and sharpener here. Um, and then what I love, my favourite thing, is if you're going out and you don't know what pencils you want to take, you want to take them all with you, this is the carry-all case and it literally just opens. It's quite dirty because I've used it a lot, but it just opens like a book. And you've got this netting here, you can put a sketchbook inside and then you've got, you know, all the different leaves to put your pencils in. And you can also add, buy new leaves um, to put more pencils in if you find that they, that isn't enough for you. And you've got this elastic strap at the back and you can literally unclip them from the middle and uh, I love it. And it's got a handle and uh, a strap and there it is literally my favourite thing. So yeah, I use that a lot. Um, so we'll get started in a second. We're just putting in the reference photo um, now, because yeah, because we, we've moved this evening, even though we've been trying to set up the last two hours, it's been uh, quite tight on time. So in a second, we'll put the reference photo up so you can see it as I'm drawing along. Um, but what we're going to do, we'll start with the white paper and I'm going to look at the snout area. So we're not going to do the eyes because we covered eyes in last week's tutorial. Now, if you weren't here for that, don't worry, it's been recorded and it'll be available for you soon. Um, I'm going to, they're all, um, Derwent has them all and then um, they're going to be released and I'll let you know details via my social media when that will be. Um, and then we'll be moving on to the black paper um, and doing the mane, which is my favourite thing to do. I love working on black paper and especially drawing lions. So if we're all sorted now, which we are, we'll um, switch over and I will start drawing the lion's nose. So here we go. So what we've got first is now I have some um, outlines. I might just move my legs a bit closer. There we go. And then um, I'm just going to put my daylight lamp on because there's not a shadow. But you might see a little bit of a refresh rate in the bottom left image, but sorry about that, it's because of my lamp. It's just an IKEA lamp with a daylight bulb in, but I use it a lot. Um, so we're going to start here. And, um, and what I'm going to do is, so you'll see, uh, if you were here in last week's tutorial, you would have heard me say about the fur around the eyes kind of goes out in a fan shape. So imagine there's a point in the middle and you've got a bit of string and you just draw out in a circle, but it fans out in that direction. So you can see from here, it goes out this way and then it curves round like this and then down here as well. And then it meets back in this position. Now the problem is the nose and all this snout area, it can, sort of just a bit against it and because uh, the nose goes up and it tends to fan out a bit but there's also some fur that goes in a bit on this lion's nose so it can go all over the place 
So what we'll do is I can show you, I'll start showing you around this area because uh, that can be the most difficult part. So if I just get rid of my outline. So to do that, I'm just using the Derwent Precision Pencil Eraser and I'm not getting rid of them completely, just a little bit. And um, I think we've got a question from Charlotte. Hello. Yeah. Um, yes, so I will be putting it up on my social media. Um, I've not done that yet because I'm going to put up all the pieces that I've done uh, in one go on my social media so you can see it all together rather than having to try and look through my feed basically. Um, but yeah, I'll be doing that uh, beginning of next week. So yeah, good question. <laughs> That's all right. Right, so what I'm going to do is my so you, as i've said uh, in previous tutorials and for anyone who isn't here for that i'll say again i always you start with the base color and work up from there so i start go light to dark so you look for the lightest color in the piece so for this one is i'm going to use wheat from light fast so uh this section here on the reference photo is quite dark so i'm not going to do that in this color but the rest of it i will so to do the base colour, you just literally can scribble it in, but go in the direction that the fur goes. So it's basically a guide for yourself. And now what, what you'll see when I get onto the black fur, we use a different technique. Um, so that's why I'm doing this now, and then we'll do that so we compare the two. And again over here, I'm just going to do in the direction that the fur will be going. So you can see on this part here, on the reference photo, the fur is quite straight, which is in comparison to this, this fur kind of goes this way and fans up, which is fine because I was saying last week that the, um, around the eye, the eye fur and the nose fur here can sometimes sort of join together like that. So, it's just a case of looking to see which direction the fur is going and um, working it out. So if you do it on the base colour, figuring it out, then you know you've got a guide for the rest of it then. So we'll just do that like that. And then what I'm going to use now is quite sort of like um, a ready colour. So I'm going to use some Mars orange in the light fast. And I'm just going to start doing a few flicks here. You don't need to be too precise and I'm not putting too much pressure on. And it's quite short first, so you're just doing little flicks, whereas compared to on the black paper, we'll be doing longer strokes. So just short flicks like that. Now you're joining up to this fur here. So I'm just going to sort of curve into it a bit like that because the forehead goes straight up and it'll fan out like that. It's just round here that it can be complicated with the fur. So like that and then in this side. Like that, not too, like not too much pressure, just quite light. And just be quick as well. I mean, it's um, just one of the base layers. And as you build up, you can put a bit more pressure on and you can go a bit slower if you feel more comfortable with that. Now, and some darker tones now, so it's browns. So I'm going to use Van Dyke Brown. And I'm using all light fast pencils in this one. So again, just strokes. Now these two sections are quite easy because it's fairly vertical. And like I said before, when you look at an image and you think, how am I going to draw that? Just don't look at it as a whole. Split it into different sections, see where different colours are. And that you'll find that there's all these different little areas and you can just focus on one area 
and you know the more you do the more it'll come to life and you'll think oh I'll see what I've done now because quite often I'll draw things and I'm not actually seeing what it is as a whole I'll just see um that section and it's not until later on I realize what I've actually drawn so here just doing some licks so it's dark in some areas on this section but there are light bits shining through um so I'm not covering the whole thing in this brown so you can see I've kind of come up here and I've gone there but I've left a little bit here and I left a little bit there without the brown on now to do that I'm just choosing where to put it so I've put a bit up here and I'm going to put a little bit down there but leave this section clear now you can you know experiment and if you do get it a bit wrong don't worry I mean there's artistic license and everything and then if you do go completely wrong you can use um your Derwent electric eraser which I've got or just another just um your Derwent pencil eraser and you can just rub it out a little bit and it'll come off and it'll be absolutely fine but yeah not too much pressure at all so now I'm going to use the Mars black now this isn't black black this is sort of um sort of a very dark browny black i would say which is quite nice so there is a black in the set which i'll be using as well um this is sort of the slight tone before you get to black so it's slightly slightly lighter and i'm just going to put in a few just a few flicks here and there only where i've put the brown not where the lighter areas are. I'm not going to completely cover it. And you just keep following the same direction you've put all your other strokes. So you can just see that it's just all about layers, all building up like that. And I'm using Derwent Light Fast Paper for this, which is great because it really does take layers very well. So quite happy with that. So now what we'll do is we're going to move on to this section here because the fur goes at very odd angles here. So I want to show you how to um, sort of cope with that because you can look at it and you think, oh no, it's like one block of colour, but all the furs sort of going in different ways. I don't know what to do, but it's absolutely fine. And again, I'm just going to get rid of my outlines not completely, but just so it's not as um, dark. I won't show through so much. So again, I'm going to use wheat. And for this, I'm going to start down the bottom. Now I can see that it goes that way here. And then it sort of curls up here like that. I might use a slightly dark colour just so you can see what I'm talking about. So it sort of goes here and it'll... Now th this is the, the wrong colour for this, but I just want to use a dark one to be able to show you. So it goes like this and then it curls round and onto the nose like that. That's the sort of direction it goes. So again, like I say with fur, fur will just fan out basically. That's all it's doing. So you just curve your lines. Don't make them really straight. Curve them. And just bring them around like that. So I'm going to go in now with wheat and just put my base in. Now that you can see the direction I've done that. Like that. And then, so it's quite a yellowy bit this bit because the light is um, reflecting off the fur. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, uh, where is it, amber gold that's what I'm going to use. And I'm just going to, again, just flick it around in the same direction that I drew my guidelines on with like that so your base is always your guide and then you do this and then I'm going to use 
the Van Dyke brown again because you start light get darker. So I wanted to cover the nose a bit this week um, after last week and I was trying to explain how all the fur goes different directions so um, hopefully this will help you when you come to draw an animal yourself especially when it's face on as well. So you just have to look so if you do one section you've got to look within that section where the darker tones are. So there's basically I could see it's just like a line going up through this section here of dark fur so I'm just doing that line. Now with drawing obviously if you do it smaller you can't get as much detail in so you might want to do that line really small or you could just um, cover the whole thing and then just go in with an even darker colour just put a few little strokes in for that bit obviously if you go bigger you want to put, you can put and want to put more detail in so you it depends on the scale of the image you're drawing um, how sort of hard you have to look at the reference image um, to see how much detail there is there but if you go smaller it might be slightly easier to begin with because you're not having to put so much detail in and that's if you want to go really realistic so i'm going to pop some tape on the bottom of my paper because it keeps moving around slightly if anyone wants to know about the tape i'm using um it's just a delicate surface painters tape now it's good and it doesn't rip white paper but black or colored paper it just takes the top layer off so i wouldn't use it for that even though i have this evening it's just to like stick it all together but yeah i wouldn't recommend it for black or colored paper but for white paper it's great so now what i'm going to do is i've got the natural brown and I'm again going to go over this dark area here. Not too much, just going to do a few, just a few little strokes, just following the direction I've done there. And it just adds in that little bit of depth. Now, it looks very saturated on the screen. Um, I don't know if any of you saw my Instagram story yesterday or my Instagram post where I did put this piece of, um, you'll see like, what the colours actually look like and again I'll post it um, beginning of next week with all the other pieces. So there we go, just add a little bit at the bottom there and then you've got that bit so you can see it's not that scary, it looks like it's going different directions but it just sort of curves up which is absolutely fine. And then this section here, now this bit, so that's the edge of the nose so and then we've got the face. I'm going to show you that the fur is going this way on the face compared to this way on the nose. So what we're going to do is now we've got a slightly darker colour here. So I'm going to make my base colour darker. So I'm going to use a brown ochre. So for that, I'm literally just going to do this. Now I'm not going to be so rough because it's quite a small area so i'm going to try and be a bit more precise about where i'm putting this so you don't have to go too quickly if you know take it slow it's absolutely fine and then so here this section's quite complicated well well not complicated but it can be confusing because you've got the fur going this way you've got the fur going that way and then you've got the fur going this way so you've got one, two, three directions, basically. But what I can see from the reference photo is it comes out from this, this bit, so tear duct, and it just curves around. So it starts to curve and then it follows this line and it curves underneath this section of fur here. So you can literally just do that. So it's got quite an edge to it this section here so i'll just put an edge in there so you it's just curling around and it can just bring the fur down so it starts down up here and goes down this way like that and then i'll just bring this down a bit more over here 
put it somewhere there. There we go. So now you can see it quite ready again. So I'm going to get my Mars orange and I'm going to start putting in those strokes. So here it sort of curves like this before it curls that way. So what I'd do is you can just do a few strokes, just curving like this. Now, when you get to more complicated sections, you will find you have to look at your reference photo quite a lot, literally like every couple of seconds. So we've got that curve like that. Then what we do is you just do a curve that other way. So you've got one going that way and then one this way. Now they're separate because you're doing this, it joins together and makes this sort of slight S shape like that there. So I'm just going to bring it up here a little bit more so it's a bit closer to this bit because there is a black area here which we'll be doing in a minute. So I'm just going to flick it up a little bit so it's easy to blend it shortly so you've not got a dead harsh line. So like that. And then I'm going to get my natural brown. Now you might see that um, pencils aren't actually massively sharp because um, as you're drawing you can get, they do sort of get an edge to them so you draw a bit here and then you can flick it around and the edge keeps sort of manipulating itself because they're quite nice creamy soft pencils so you can get away with it but if you do really want a sharp point I recommend the Derency point mechanical sharpener and I might end up using that shortly anyway so I can show you but for now I think it's all right so I'm just gonna flick it so just follow the same line so you've got this curve here and then a curve down here like that I'm not going to completely cover it, I'm leaving gaps between each bit of fur. But you can see how much darker this area is than this area and that's because we used a darker base colour so it just helps with the um, tones you put on top then. It's all darker colours but if you start with the correct base colour it just really helps you out. So I'm going to go on to Mars Black again. And um, it's a bit dark around here, so I'm just going to again do these little sections. And then it's quite sort of um, scattered the black within this area, it's just lots of little black bits, so it's not one sort of line area, it's just everywhere. So you can literally just, just do a bit here, do a bit there, just a bit there, just you can be quite random with it like that, but always following the same line. And then if that's not quite dark enough, which I don't think it is, I'll go on to the pure black. And it'll be the same areas. I'm just going to do the same thing. Like that. You see it all starts to come together then. And then we've got this black area here. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to go in with my the Mars Black because I've left this slight gap. I'm actually going to just do a line like this. I'm not pressing too hard because you don't want it to be a really harsh line. I'm just doing it a, quite lightly. And what you can do from there, I'm just going to give my um, Mars Black a little sharpen. And then from that point, you can follow the line that you've made with this fur. So this fur is going up that way. So I'll flick the pencil down this way. And then this side, I'll flick the pencil that way because the fur is going that way. And it just blends the two together then. So 
And this bit you can put a little bit more pressure on because you want it to be really black. You want it to blend well. I'm still using the Mars black at the moment and I don't think I'm going to need the pure black. So it's looking quite good like that. And then this side, I'm just going to flick this side. Like that. Now make sure when you do your flicks, you leave space between them all. And then some of them you'll want to make slightly longer than others so you've not got like a dead straight edge as you go along. So if I like did them all like the same length like this, you start to just get like a block. So just want them spaced out and just flick it out. Now up here, I'm just going to do it like that. It's almost vertical up here, but it just blends it like that there. That's that bit there. And then we've got here, move down a bit. Um, the fur kind of goes up a bit and out that way and sort of curves around. So it's almost like you've got this point here, like this um, where the fur comes from. So it sort of circles around this point. So we'll do that now. And I'm going to use, I'm going to go back to my wheat for that because even though there's some darker colours here because we're blending into light I'm just going to do a little bit of wheat before I go into the darker colour which I'll use with brown ochre again so I'm going to remove some of my lines so I've got the wheat and you'll see so we've got the tough the uh well yeah it's basically a tuft of fur coming from this point I can see so I'm just gonna curve around this way and it starts to curve over here like that and then up here I'll get a dark pencil again so I can you can see it so up here it will curve up so you, you're going this way and then it goes up to the top of the head where it goes vertical but then over here it will go like this and then as it meets this side you'll find this on like any dog cat whatever as it meets this side it goes up as well so you kind of get this triangular shape like that so it'll curve 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 but it gets slightly more horizontal at each time and then it meets a triangle but then you've got that triangle point and then down here it's more vertical so I know this is why I'm covering this because it can be confusing and complicated because there's so many different directions going on, but it's okay. You just have to keep looking and trying to cover up and um, figure out which way it's all going. So I'm just going to put a bit more wheat down here. So that's where I want the edge of the light area to go. And then I'm going to get my brown ochre. And I'm going to do this where the dark area is going to go. So you can see I'm just following this line down and down here it becomes more vertical. So like that there. And then it remains vertical in the middle. So it just curves down and then over here it will just be like that. So just keep looking back at my reference photo, back at my image, and you just have to work it out like that there. So that's quite vertical there. So it just curves around like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my uh yeah i'm going to get the amber gold i'll do this bit first and because that's still got the sun on it so again i'm going to follow the same lines like that just into where the dark base color is just like that and i'm just going to use the same Colors. So I'm going to get my 
Van Dyke Brown. Now I'm jumping all over the place here a little bit just because I'm trying to show you all like the difficult sections but if I was doing this like just drawing it by myself I would have probably just done this whole area first before sort of attaching it to either side so that's why I'm sort of a bit jumping around all over the place so here just gonna put a few strokes in now it's quite nice to do it up to the edge here because it just blends the two together so just like that and over this edge a little bit and then I'm going to get my natural brown like this and just go in slightly darker not too much and not too much pressure just in certain areas now it's slightly ready as well so i'm going to get the mars orange just adding a few orange tones i'm just gonna put in a few strokes not too many but you can see the direction of the fur there now this area is quite dark and black and it's got a lot of sort of ready color in now we're over halfway so I'm going to do this bit and then we'll probably move on to the black paper so here there is quite a lot of orange so I'm going to put a bit of pressure on I'm not going to worry about sort of space in between strokes I'm just going to put it down but as I get up to this bit where it's a bit darker I'm just going to fade it off so you just put less pressure on but as you're doing it always follow the direction that you put your base colour down in. And then I'm going to use um, the Venetian Red, which I really should have to say last week, but I've got it now. So just to add a few dark colours. So I'm just going to mostly put it around this area here because it actually fades and gets lighter down here. I've actually made this section slightly too big in um, against like the corners of the reference photo but it's because I wanted to show you how it is. If I did it smaller then it would look a bit too small. So all of this area here is actually quite light on the reference photo so I've just gone over it a tad but it's fine. And if that does happen to you just use a Durant electric eraser and that will get rid of that perfectly fine. So I'm just going to add in this red here now I'm just going up to this edge I don't need to be too precise with this because we're going in with the black in a second and it will start to blend it all together so if I find I have a lot of pencils in my hand my Mars black again I am going to just so you can see there's a line here between the two so I'm just going to start putting a few strokes in the curves around so I'm just going to a few strokes and just curve them ever so slightly like all that now I'll probably use the black in a minute just to make it that bit darker and then up here is quite a lot of black so I'm going to just again follow the line and this goes a bit more vertical here And then it gets quite dark up in here and it starts to flick this way slightly because you're on this side of the um, face now it's all about what side you're on basically um, depending on which way the fur goes so it's easier just to concentrate on the one side first before going to the side so look at one side break it down into sections before you go on to the other side and you can break that down into sections and it just all becomes a whole lot easier then it's just easy to manage now this bit here, this curves up here, uh, but it goes a little bit horizontal. So I'm just going to just do some flicks. Like that. Just 
just like and then we're going to just do that and then I'm going to get the black and I'm just going to go over this line again same direction just to darken it and I'm just going to do a few flicks here and there not completely covering it now if you find that you've got you've gone too dark and you just want to put a few sort of whiter furs in you can either um use the pencil eraser to sharpen it and do that or um what i've got here is a it's called a slice knife um and you can just flick like that and it just takes the top layer of pigment off i'm not sure if you ever see that on the camera but it doesn't cut the paper because it's a ceramic knife but it just takes just a few bits layers of pigment off and it just lightens gives a few lighter um bits of fur so i'm gonna sharpen my pencil eraser as well now sharpen this i use the derwent um twin hole sharpener which i use a lot as well i have a lot of sharpeners i love them so or you can just basically use this just oh, i've got some pencil sharp uh, yeah, sharpening on it use this like that just adding a few bits of fur now if you find that's too thick then you can just go back with the pencil and just sort of go around the edge and just sort it out like that there we go so yeah it does look very oversaturated that area on the um camera but um yeah like i said i'll just i'll pop the images up on social media so i'm just going to put in a few bits of black over here just because then it blends this i mean it's fairly defined line on the line but i can see there are bits of black on this lighter area so i'm just going to do one or two strokes every now and then again like that so right cool now we've done that i'm going to have to move on to the black paper now because otherwise i'm never going to get it done um so i'm just going to shuffle over a little bit right so got the black paper let's take my reference space to move that over okay sure um so with this black paper i do outlines i don't know if you'll be able to see them because they're very very faint which is why i've got my lamp on i use a daylight um lamp it's basically just an ikea lamp and i put a daylight bulb in it um because i you don't rub out your outlines on black paper because if you use a normal rubber, it will mark the paper. Um, now you'll find this with any black paper. Um, you can use a putty rubber, but I prefer just to do really light outlines and just leave it. So the black paper I'm using is from the Derwent Black Paper Sketchbook. Um, I've got the A3 size one and it's really nice smooth paper. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna show you now the technique for doing the lion's mane. So, everything I've just sort of said about sort of putting your base colour down on white paper, you don't do that on black paper um, because you want some of the black to show through. So, you don't want to completely cover it up. Now, black paper is very, very easy and quick to work on, I find, because you can. I'll still work from light to dark, but then you can go back over with light again. Um, so you can be really quick about it basically and just have fun and play around. So I'm going to start now with, um, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to use yellow ochre there. And basically I'm just going to flick in the direction that the fur goes. So I'm not colouring it in. I'm just doing flicks like that, just sort of loosely, and that's it. That's your base down. That's all you need. Um, and because it's so quick, you can do a few different sections at a time, which is what I like to do. So I'll do 
down here like that and then yeah I'll just do that those two areas for now because that's where the camera's pointing so um I can get my amber gold now because this is quite a sort of golden um light on this mane and I'm going to again do the flicks in the same direction like that but with a lion's mane the fur's longer so the strokes are longer so you're not doing lots of little strokes like this you're doing big strokes like that and because the fur goes in all sorts of different directions you don't need to be too precise and particular about it which is good which is why I like doing it because it's so much fun so drawing lines on black paper is my absolute favourite thing to do so I'm going to try the brown ochre no that's not the right colour so I say that's not the right colour because it's looking a bit too light. I want a slightly darker colour for that area. So I'm going to go for the Van Dyke Brown. Just darkens it a bit, not too much. And again down here. And then I'm going to go for the Venetian Red. And again the same area so on the edge of this section of fur it's quite light but then it gets darker as it sort of tucks underneath this bit of fur here and it's the same on this one so i just put a bit of dark there but not all the way to the edge now if you find that that's not looking dark enough and you've not left enough of the black paper coming through it's absolutely fine because you can put black down still so i'm going to use my black and i'm just going to do a few strokes, not too many, but it just darkens up that area again, like that. And then I can show you that if I find the right colour, because I've got so many in my hand. Um, I'll try with, let's try with the wheat. There we go. I need to shut up in it though. Oops, sorry, nothing that comes. It's cool. Give me that quick sharp, and I don't need it too sharp, so it's fine. And then you'll find, like here, because it's quite dark, you can actually. That one's not working. Of course, it wouldn't. <laughs> the white will. So you can actually just do some flicks over it. So the wheat didn't work because it was. Um, this probably isn't quite dark enough um, against the, so that's, even though it's quite a light colour, it's still probably not light enough to go over this area. So you can see, you can literally just do random flicks any which way like that and it just adds in a little bit more texture to the mane because you get random wisps of fur all over it like that. So what I'll do now is I can show you. So that's that sort of um, technique there. So I'm going to go up to the top corner now. And um, so you'll see on the reference photo, uh, it's quite dark and there are just random wisps of fur everywhere. Now this is the really fun bit to do because you can just go mad. And it's basically just one colour. I'll add in a, a, another colour or so just to kind of give it depth. But I've got my Mars orange and because it's just random wisps on black, you can literally just sort of wiggle like this any which direction you want. But you don't want to do too much. So here, the um, this it's slightly more of like a cluster of fur, so it's more of a strong image on the reference photo. Over here, it's quite dark, so there's only a few furs. So you can literally just wiggle and just go any direction like that. And it just shows a messy mane then. Just like that. And then this bit here, I'd say there's more of a cluster here because you can see the colour better, it's a stronger colour. So because it's more of a cluster, it sort of all goes in the same direction. So you want to roughly keep it going this direction here. But you can just sort of curve it as long as you've got the your pencil drawing down this way it's fine you can just sort of wiggle 
your way around the paper like that. And it just causes this cluster here. And then what I'll do is I'm going to go over with champagne colour. Oh, sorry, I'm messing the camera again. Which I just need to sharpen. There we go. So got that and then I can just go over and you can see the champagne's very close in colour to wheat, I would say. It's probably slightly darker, but you can see this is what I was trying to show you before when I used wheat that you can go over with light colours on the dark colours when you're working on black paper and it works really nicely. Like that. And then you can do the same over here. Just do few strands of fur and these are the fur that would just hit the light that's reflecting on the main so you don't need to do too many just like that there you go and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to the fur so I'm going to use amber gold just a little bit not too much just on that little section there like so you can see sort of how quick, like this whole area was to do compared to the small area on the white. Now, like granted the white, it was a more complicated section. Um, but even if you did that on black, it would still be a lot quicker, um, which is what I like. And I've even drawn on black paper with just one white pencil. I just used a Derwent Light Fast white pencil on black paper and I drew a snow leopard. And then um, I've not shared that on my social media yet. But we'll be doing it in a few weeks. So when you see it, you'll think, ah, she talked about that in her tutorial. So yeah, now we'll go on to this bit here now. Because you've got this light area on top and then like this slightly dark area beneath. So this shows how they sort of match together. So again, I'm going to use the yellow ochre. So I've chosen that as my base colour for the main. And I'm just going to do strokes, just look at the direction the fur is going. Just long, long strokes. And you can just be, it's just quite nice. It's therapeutic to do, and you don't have to be too precise. I'm just gonna curve it this way, like that. Now, the black paper picks up the pigment so well, which is why it's so nice to draw on because you just put a mark on and it's just there instantly, whether it's a dark or a light colour, whereas on white paper, as much as I love drawing white paper, it takes a bit more effort to get the colours down. And again, that's why it is so quick to draw on black paper. And underneath here, so this fur goes beneath this swish here, and then it just sort of curves, a bit curves that way and a bit of curves down there. So you just keep following it wherever the fur is going it will go any which way it wants and again you don't have to be too precise because I mean you're looking at the reference photo but that's just the way the main was the time the photo was taken the line will move his head to the side and it all change directions so no one's going to know which way the fur goes it's just you that knows so it's all absolutely fine so I'm going to use my Mars orange just add in some of those orange tones here now these bits are here are slightly lighter because I think they're part of the lighter section up here so I'm not going to put it on that just yet. So just going to follow these long strokes like that. There we go. Now there are certain bits of um, black within these because they're almost like three separate strands that sort of tangled together in places. So like I said you can go back over it with black it's not a problem. So you can just do literally, I've basically done like four strokes there and you can see that's already sort of separated this little bit from that, but you don't need to do much at all. And again, I'll do the same up here, just like that. And I might just do a little bit down here like that. Now I'll probably get the white again. See, see how small the white is. <laughs> 
So I use this, I'm just using some of the snow leopard in this, which is like, but you can see I, I drew a whole snow leopard on black paper and it was A4 size and I still didn't use the whole pencil. It was pretty good though, you laugh. Now I'll just add a few random wisps like that. Now I like adding these random wisps because it doesn't make the mane look so flat because you can see, like, it's like if you look at your hair, say you, your hair's dead straight and you've brushed it, you will still have bits that sort of like wiggle about and, you know, go any which way. And that's, that's just my hair. <laughs> so, right, I'm going to do this a little bit now. So, oh, I need to drop my pencils. So I'm going to go back to, I'm going to get am amber gold, like this. like that there. So I just followed the line and then I'm going to get my Mars orange because there are darker tones. So it's basically working light to dark again, but like I said, you can go back over with light and it's, it's great, I love it. So I'm just gonna add in just a few dark hints here and there. Now this bit here, slightly darker around here just because it comes from under this section. And add a little bit more there, not too much. And then I'm going to go with natural brown. And just go over that little bit just to darken it even more. So you don't always have to use the black to put in the darker tones. But if they are really dark, like up here, you just want to put a definition between the two strokes, then you know, go for it. But it's all about experimenting. Just get a bit of black paper, get your pencils, and just have a draw, and you'll find that um, it's just so sort of easy to get the pigment down on it. Like that there. And then I'm aware that we're almost out of time again already. I can't believe how quick these go. So I'm just gonna do this little bit here. I'm gonna get yellow ochre and all this sort of flicks this way. So you can see this section here comes down, this goes across, this goes this way, and then this one's going this way. So, you know, just, you know, pick out clumps basically of fur and just draw that clump and just see which way it goes. And it's all, you know, when you break it down like that, it just makes it so much easier and simpler. And it's just the way I draw anything, you just break it down. And then it'll just come up like this down here. So I'm just going to put a defined line against this one because I don't want to go over the top of that. And then I'm just going to do a few random strokes here, all in the same direction. So you can see I've not gone so, I've put more pressure down here than here and over here. So it's slightly darker around this bit of fur that curves up because it goes underneath it, so there's a bit of a shadow there. So I'm going to now get the Venetian red, I think, because this is quite sort of a dark reddy area. I'm just going to cover it with Venetian red, like this. Now this bit of fur, uh, it gets lighter at the end, so I'm not going to go right the way to the end. Um, but there we go. And then I'm going to get natural brown. And you just look at where the shadows are because there are quite a few shadows with manes because obviously there's all this fur sort of interlaced and overlapping so you to define each sort of shape you want shadows against them so you've got this shape here so i want a shadow up here shape here i want a shadow there shape here and i want a shadow there shape here i want a shadow there like that so it just gives definition to them all so to show you a bit clearer on the camera, probably, I'll just go over the Mars black. You've got shape here, so a bit of shadow, shape there, bit of shadow, shape here, bit of shadow there. Always going in the same direction as on the fur. Shape here, so I'm just going to get a shadow there, like that, and then just bring a few strokes down. And then if you've got like um, a whole block here where it looks very flat, just because it's all, it's all one colour, basically. Just get your black and just 
stroke up like that and do another one there and it just breaks up that little bit there so it's not all dark around the edge and light in the middle you've got two sort of black strokes and it just you know defines it slightly and just makes it look that little bit better and then what i'd probably do is get my white and i just you know do a few random strokes you don't have to even look at your reference photo for this bit you just you know pick a point put your pencil down and just flick it like that there we go so i think we're about out of time now oh uh, which has gone very quickly again so i'm going to turn around and uh, so we'll turn around switch the cameras and there we go so has anybody got any final questions or is everyone okay if you have type it into derwent um yeah so I, if you're typing i'll just talk so um i'll just say i hope you've enjoyed these tutorials um yeah i found them really fun i can't believe how quick the week like all the weeks have gone to be honest i can't believe it's the fourth one already and now it's finished um but yeah i've absolutely loved doing them and thank you so much for joining us i'll just put my headphone in in case there are any questions um is there any coming through nope cool i'll take that there's like a slight second delay so i can hear myself talking back though <laughs> um yeah but thank you again so much for everyone who has joined um don't forget that the discount code is der 20 tutorial and you can have that until the end of march uh, so you've still got a bit of time left on that um if you have any questions after this and you're trying to draw any of the pieces i've drawn in these tutorials oh i think we've got one question have we don't know. Yes. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. Yeah, that's great. I'm glad you've all enjoyed it because um, obviously I'm basically just talking to myself, like I'm waffling on and hoping that you're um, picking up on different hints and tips. But yeah, I'm glad you've enjoyed them. I've enjoyed doing them and just thanks so much for joining me. And yes, any questions, just drop me a message on Facebook or Instagram. So uh, Instagram, I'm Pritch underscore art. And on Facebook, I am Pritch art 17. Um, Cause Pritch underscore art was taken on Facebook. So I had to change it. Um, also, if you do any of the pieces that you've seen in these tutorials, um, love to see them. So please tag me and Derwent in them. Cause we would love to have a look at what you've done. So I think we'll leave it there. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have a lovely rest of the week and from next week we get the lighter evening so it's even better because it's spring and we're all happy about that um yeah so enjoy the rest of your evening thank you again for joining and i will see you soon bye <laughs>